Yes, it is finally working. After more than two years, this project has indeed come to an end. Welcome to Chronic Mechatronic, I'm Benjamin and today I want to show off my Arduino pen plotter, talk about some pros and cons of this design and fix a little issue I'm having with this machine. I'm also going to show you around the software side of things because it's not always obvious how to set up custom CNC's like this one and in 2021 most of the tutorials online are already outdated. Well, that intro was slick, even if I say so myself. So for a little bit of context, I built this machine back in 2019. I don't know the exact time of the year it was, but it only took me like three days to build all the mechanical stuff, like the entire gantry and everything. However, when I moved on to the software, which is one of the most important, if not the most important part of the CNC, I just could not get it to work. It just didn't do anything it should. It was throwing error codes all over the place no matter what G code I was putting into the thing and the servo used to make the pen go up and down just didn't do anything. And all that even though I was following the instructions to the letter. So after about a week of trying to solve a mystery in a field I ultimately had no experience and no knowledge in whatsoever, I eventually did what every reasonable person would do and simply gave up, telling myself that I just wasn't quite ready for CNC yet. But now, after two years with a big project coming up, I thought it would be a good idea to get this thing working in the first place, so I went all out and after two weeks, two rather tiring weeks of sitting on the computer all day long, I finally got it to the point where it is now. Now, I'm gonna come back to why it finally works later. For now, let's take a look at the good and the bad of the mechanical design. I know it's a little overkill for just a pen plotter, but I quite like the overall design as it's kinda compact and therefore sturdy, but also very simple and effective. And if that's not a pro, I don't know what is. It basically just consists of a plywood rectangle screwed together at the corners in which the drawing surface slides back and forth to make the y-axis. Then we've got these side pieces also screwed to the rectangle to which I've attached a strip of MDF which basically acts as the x-axis. The little axe carriage is also made from MDF and has this tiny little z-axis on it which slides up and down by about 10 millimeters on a bunch of metal rods and if it wants to draw the servo just drops it and to stop it just pushes it up again. Like I said, very simple and effective. It just relies on the weight of the z-axis to push the pen on the paper. May not work with pencils, but that's linked to a con I'll talk about later. The next advantage is obviously using these 28BYJ48 stepper motors. These are ridiculously cheap and in my opinion, well good enough for the job, even though a little slow. Related to the stepper motors, I'm not even using timing belts to move the axes back and forth. It's actually just some stiff string which is clamped underneath the washer here and runs over a pulley on the motor as well as an idler on the other side. To take some of the radial load from tensioning the belt off the motor, I added a little extension shaft to the pulley and extended the motor mount to take up the force. Now you might wonder, what if the string slips on the wooden pulley? Well, fear not, I got you covered as I force suddenly lined the groove of the pulley with 800 grit sandpaper, which very effectively stops any slippage up to the point that if it runs past the end stop into the wall, it just starts abrading the string. Guess how I know that. The last advantage I can think of for now is that the entire thing is simply powered via USB, should not be done from your computer, but it simply plugs into any standard phone charger right into the wall outlet and the plug's even got an LED in it, which is amazing. So before we move on to pick this thing apart again after I just praised it to heaven, I quickly wanted to remind you to smash that subscribe button just because at some point I kind of want to make a living off this channel, but at this rate I'll be long dead before that happens. So if you like watching my videos, please subscribe and also hit that bell icon to get immediately notified for new videos, that way you can be the first to comment. Now the biggest drawback is 
the linear rails. While that may partly be due to the fact that, by definition, these never were linear rails in the first place, because I just used some standard anodized aluminum U-channel I had lying around and put it on either side of the axis, then ground these metal L-brackets to fit the channel very snugly. The problem here is, as I probably could have foreseen right from the beginning, that these two aluminum rails are never going to be 100% parallel, which is just a very complicated way of saying that the X carriage fits very snugly over here, while it visibly wiggles around on the other side. And that almost defies part of the purpose of a linear rail, especially since I could have easily prevented that by simply spring-loading the upper bracket so it always pushes down onto the aluminum rail, no matter how far they are apart. The point I want to drive home here is that I could have gone with a much simpler, almost all wood design and would have gotten less backlash. That being said, surprising as it may seem, the issue with the x-axis does not actually seem to have any visible impact on the print quality. Because if you take a look at the finished drawing, you will notice that all the big stroke misalignments predominantly occur on the y-axis. And I think that has to do with this very unhealthy scratching noise the y-axis makes when it moves. Listen. Yeah, that's not good. I think it's just the idler pulley binding on the shaft, so I'm gonna fix that right now. Fixing that actually brings me to the next disadvantage of the design, which, although to be honest, purely an inconvenience, is serviceability. Yes, I didn't exactly skimp on glue joints, even though on a CNC everything should be adjustable or at the very least removable in case you need to access or replace some other parts. I polished up the nail I used as a shaft and greased the inside of the pulley as best I could without ripping apart the glue joint. Now, while everything's still taken apart, I'm also going to embed some very decrepit neodymium magnets in the print bed to allow for papers to be attached using small magnets, which would be much more environmentally friendly and also less of a pain in the butt than the adhesive tape I used so far. So the last con I want to talk about is the pen holder. Initially, the idea seemed very slick. Just being able to take the pen, pop it into the machine and start printing. Basically, what I did was just cut off one of these lids and hot glue it onto the machine, which does make for a very nice quick release. The idea being, since I have these pens in all kinds of colors, I could just take whatever color I like and put it into the machine to start printing a nice colorful picture. However, that basically makes the machine only work with proprietary ink cartridges, which really sucks. Because in reality, sometimes I really want to use some other kind of pen, like either a ballpoint pen or even a pencil. Problem with these is, they just don't fit. So it really would have been better to make some kind of screw clamp thingy, like you get on cheap compasses, that way, I could at least use pencils whenever I like. And with enough complaints for the next decade, it was my very first CNC project after all. The thing is, I'm just so much better at detecting stuff that could be improved on a project while simultaneously taking all the good things for granted. Anyway, let's move on to the electronics. Electronic-wise, there really isn't all that much going on here. We've only got an Arduino Uno clone and a ULN2003 stepper motor driver for each stepper motor respectively, plus one measly limit switch per axis. Because the real magic is all done within the software. In fact, to make a CNC work at all with unipolar stepper motors instead of the traditional bipolar ones, the Arduino needs to be flashed with a slightly modified version of Gerbil in order to send commands the motor controller can actually execute. If you don't know what Gerbil or GRBL is, it's pretty much the standard firmware for Arduino-based CNCs. The specific version needed was modified by three very nice guys quite a few years ago and published on their GitHub pages. It uses a quote, ugly hack, to make the Arduino cycle through the required steps directly, which eliminates the need for more sophisticated motor controllers. 
On pin 11, which was originally used for controlling the spindle RPM, we've now got control of the servo used to raise and lower the pen. So far, so good. To interface with the computer, we also need a software that sends the G-code to the Arduino, and in this case, I'm using Universal G-Code Sender, which also seems to be one of the best options for Arduino CNC. And here is where it gets complicated. In order to print anything at all, you need a G-code file the Arduino can understand and thus execute. To create such a file for a pen plotter, Inkscape is pretty much the only choice. It's a very good and importantly, free vector graphics editor, allowing you to draw or transform anything you can possibly draw with an Arduino plotter into paths that can actually be executed by a CNC. By default, Inkscape can only save graphics as an SVG or PNG file, omitting a few other options, but not actually as the G-code file the plotter wants. So we need an extension to transform the vector graphic into a G-code file, and even though Inkscape comes with a G-code extension pre-installed, this one doesn't really work for a pen plotter. So here is where most outdated tutorials online tell you to use the MakerBot Unicorn G-code extension. Worth noting that support for this app ended in 2018, and when I tried it in 2019, it didn't work at all like I mentioned in the beginning. That probably wasn't even due to the added support for the extension, because here is the part I really want you to take away from this video. Having a file labeled .gcode does not imperatively mean Gerbil can interpret it. And having a G-code file Gerbil can process is not automatically going to make the plotter draw the nice picture you drew in your computer. Most likely is going to execute the overall shape without ever activating the servo to put the pen down on the paper. And here is the reason why. First, most G-code generators for some reason litter the code with commands Gerbil doesn't understand. Second, since most G-code extensions are designed to work with a proper CNC, where the Z-axis is also controlled by a stepper motor, they will inevitably translate every start and stop of a line into a Z-axis motion instead of the start stop spindle command we need to activate the servo. Yes, it's literally that easy. This was the only reason why it didn't work when I tried it for the first time after building the plotter, it simply wouldn't move because the code didn't say so. And I assumed having a G-code file was synonymous with the Arduino being able to interpret it. So how did I overcome this? Well, after a lot of digging I came across another Inkscape extension which was specifically written to use a standard CNC machine as a pen plotter. And this extension includes a section where you can enter the specific G-code command needed to raise and lower the pen. So with all that cleared, what does the process of printing a file with the Arduino pen plotter look like overall? Still a lot more complicated than with your average printer, I'm afraid. First, we'll need to draw a file, and for simplicity, I'm just going to create two stars, one with and one without fill, just to show you something. Make sure all objects are converted into paths before launching the extension. Then we'll go to Save As, select the 3 axis G-code plotter option, and click Save. This is going to make the extension pop up where we can adjust all the settings, which I have already done, so I'm going to click OK, and now it saves a G-code file to the folder I selected earlier. Now we have a G-code file, but even with this extension there are some commands in it that will throw errors in Gerbil. So the only solution is to open the G-code file using some text editor and deleting the first few lines preceding the initial start coordinates. Also, for some reason the extension doesn't tell the machine to return to zero after completing the job, so I'm adding this command manually at the end of the file. Save, and we have a file ready for printing. In Universal G-Code Center we can now open that exact file, home the machine, return it to zero, and then, finally, press start. So yeah, that's the process. Definitely not plug and play, but once you get everything dialed in and preset, it's quite feasible. My repair seems to have at least been partly successful, the terrible scratching noise on the y-axis is now completely gone, however, looking at the before and after test print, there is still quite some backlash left. Actually, it looks pretty much the same. 
To be fair though, some of that backlash is within the gearing of the stepper motor, and since the y-axis is just so much heavier to push around, it also has a much bigger impact on the overall print quality. As for the magnets attaching the paper, that didn't work out as well as I had hoped. The print bed is just way too smooth, so at some point the paper did work its way loose and got screwed up, and I just taped it on for the time lapse. But to be honest, I don't really care, because at some point I'm gonna build a new pen plotter anyway, and that one's probably going to double up as a laser engraver, because to be honest, a pen plotter isn't really on top of the list of most practical tools you can have. Last thing I wanted to show you is that G-code plot doesn't work flawlessly either. Sometimes when shading objects, it just skips a few lines, like here, and here, 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 and here. I mean, it's not a big deal, it's only one line out of many, but that really shouldn't happen. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this story of a project that's been on hold for two entire years. If you did, don't hesitate to leave a thumbs up. As usual, links to everything I talked about will be in the video description, and I'll see you next time. Bye!